my strength this hour, Jesus. You're my deliverer, yes, you are, Jesus. The goodness of Jesus. I'm Vivian Brown. Thank you so very much for joining us today. Well, we're going to open up with a prayer and then we're going to jump right into the word for today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and we love you and we honor you. We thank you so very much for seeing fit to bring us through another glorious day. Father, we thank you for sending your only begotten son. Father, we thank you for seeing fit to bless us each and every day with your wonderful spirit. Father, I ask anyone who's out here and they are watching this video, I ask that whatever word that they need to receive from you this day, that you allow me, Father, to be used as your vessel to reach your people, Father. I pray that anyone that's going through right now, Father, whatever they need, I pray that their need is met right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we love you. Father, we adore you. And we thank you for being who you are. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, this evening, we're going to jump right into... Uh, Matthew, God was just really on me about this particular area, Matthew chapter 27, and he needed for me to help you to understand what he did with his son. He needed for me to tr some kind of way get across that he gave his only son to us. He gave his only son son to us. He gave us Jesus on a platter. He gave him to us. He needs for us to understand. I need for those of you who don't quite understand to understand if you have children, he gave his child to us to save us from our sins. God gave us his son. One of the first things we do when he gives us his child, we put him on trial. We will be reading today from Matthew chapter 27, and we're going to read from verse 15 through 25. 15 through verses 25. This scripture is about when Jesus and Barabbas was put on trial. I know most of you probably know this story. So let's jump right into it. It says, Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, let him be crucified. And the governor said, why, what evil have he done? But they cried out the more saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the, before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood 
of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Wow. Whew. You know, <laughs> it is absolutely amazing the things that we do. Just keep in mind that Jesus, up until this point, when he was arrested, he had been healing the sick, saving people. He had been doing so many different things. And the people did see the glory of God raising the dead. I spoke about that on a previous video where he raised Lazarus. But it's amazing that they saw all of these glorious things and still they wanted Barabbas. You know, I, I know this particular story so often. We look at it and we say, how in the world could they have chosen Barabbas? Well, actually, it's not really that they chose Barabbas, but that they really didn't want Jesus. Not that they wanted Barabbas, but they didn't want Jesus. Now, think about that for a moment. God <laughs> gave his only begotten son. He sent him down here to us. We didn't want the murderer who Barabbas was, but we didn't want Jesus more. You know, it's amazing how we think that we look at this, this story and we say, how could they turn their backs or choose Barabbas? over Jesus when he went through healing and, and blessing people and um, delivering people from demons and raising the dead. And they saw this and we say, how could they? Let me ask you this. How often have we know Jesus has blessed us? Know that he put food on our table. Know that he's put shelter over our, over our heads when we didn't have a job. Know that he blessed us with that promotion or that job. Know that he is blessing our children each and every day. Know that even when our money is looking funny, he still pay all the bills. Know that when that car breaks down, he makes sure we still getting from, from point A to point B. Know that anytime we need something, it's there. How many times has he done that for us? Yet and still, what do we do? We've chosen our own Barabbas. How many times have you chosen sin over Jesus? How many times have we chosen adultery over Jesus? You know, uh, Angie, um, I've never cheated on my wife before. I mean, I'm, I'm married. Happily married. I know. I kind of figured that. Wait. times have we chosen fornication over Jesus? Ready for this. I think I should take you home. I think it's best. <laughs> I can't tell you how helpful this has all been. You know, Gold Star for Christy. Thanks, you really helped me in here. I felt that. You don't have to oh, no, 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 really, I shouldn't come to your apartment, no, really. come on. Oh, Christy, don't, no, no, I shouldn't be in here, you know, like, oh, um, I'm not ready for this. I mean, are we, are, are we by ourselves in here? Of course we're by ourselves, oh, come Christy. on. Christy. Marcus, spend the night with me. Oh, Christy, no, it's just too soon, like, I... <laughs> I just don't want to be hurt.
I won't hurt you. Please be gentle. How many times have we chosen murder over Jesus? Y'all think you can drive any speed you want around here? You had us scared to death, man. Don't you call me man, Jew boy. No, sir. What should I call you? You don't call me nothing, nigga loving Jew boy. You just listen. Yes, sir. Well, you ain't even starting to smell like a nigga, Jew boy. Take it easy. We'll be all right. Sure you will, nigga lover. He's seen your face. That ain't good. You don't want him seeing your face. Oh, it don't make no difference no more. How many times have we chosen lust to allow our lustful spirit to be chosen over Jesus? What you doing? Staring at you. Been there all night, haven't you? <laughs> you covered me up. Yeah, it gets so cold around here. I don't want you to get sick or nothing like that. Mm. It's just that most men would have uncovered me. All of them, in fact. A man would do something like that to you. It's not very nice. Where are you staying, anyway? You have family around here? You know, I sure had a fine time last night, Jackson. Me too. Thank you for covering me up and all. Rubbing my feet and all. Oh, it's no problem. Really, it's no problem. Virgin Jackson. Why you want to ask me a question like that for? I'll take that as a yes. I ain't no virgin. <laughs> I could teach you. How many times have we chosen lying over Jesus? Lie. I'm a three. Whoa. Hey. Did you do something to your hair? <laughs> it's a bit extreme, isn't it? No. I mean, that's... That's a thing nowadays, right? Well, he said it would accent my facial features. Well, that's what it does. It completely accents your facial features. <gasps> We're just going to go down to my office now. <coughs> hey, Fletcher. Hey, Pete. You losing a little weight? I don't know. Maybe. Looks and personality. A double threat guy. Hey, Mr. Reed. Hey, man. Uh, Randy. Yeah, I know. 
steak and lunch uh, orders, Mr. Reed. Anything? No, thanks. Um, had so much for breakfast, I'm just about ready to pop. I mean, I'm full. Okay. Great. Max! Check that out! Oh. Hey, what's new? Well, it's my birthday tomorrow, and we're having a party and everything. Wow! I am sure that your daddy has got you something wonderful. Yeah? Yeah, you bet! <laughs> Listen, kiddo, why don't you go play in my office with me? Sue somebody for everything they got. Maybe you can send a fax to one of your girlfriends. Hey, sorry. Damn it! I completely forgot. Oh, what a surprise. You are a saint. I should buy you a gift. You did. I always do the classy thing. Any calls? Judge Rawlings, clerk. He needs your filing. Tell him it's in the mail. Right, she'll do it next week. Mr. McKinley phone to confirm your meeting tomorrow. Strep throat. Mm. No, some kind of virus. What's going around? Asian flu. Good one. And your mother called. I'm on vacation. It's your fifth week. Snowed in. Phones are down. Break mother's heart. Done. No, well, that's it. Except Miranda's looking for you. Ah. Oh. How much do I have to kiss to make partner in this damn place? Tell her I broke my leg and I had to be shot. Why don't you tell her yourself? How many times have we chosen to be thieves over Jesus? So, we need to make sure we examine ourselves before we get to pointing the finger at the people saying that, look at all that he did for them, but look at what he's done for us. He gave us his only begotten son. He makes sure that our needs are met each and every day. We may not have everything that we want, but he makes sure that we have everything that we need. But yet and still, we choose our sin over Jesus. He gave us his only begotten son. He gave us his only begotten son. He gave us his only begotten son that whomever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Until next time, choose Jesus. Be blessed.